Now, gents, it's safe to say that I own more bags than the average guy. Seriously, I was going through my closet, going through my storage room, went through my office. I found almost 50 bags. And we're talking all types. I've got briefcases. I've got messenger bags. I've got overnight bags, weekender bags, duffel bags. I've got satchels, man bags. Why so many men's bags? Well, when you've been making men's style videos for coming in on a decade, you get quite a few bags sent to you. In addition, it's something I've picked up some of these myself just because I wanted examples to be able to show you in the videos. Now, having all these bags, the question pops up, well, Antonio, if you've got all these bags, which is the best one to own? What should a professional man have? What should he grab? Which one is the best? Now, you're a smart guy, so you probably know there isn't a right answer to this very general question because it really comes down to what are your requirements? Are you someone that needs a bag that's relatively small, that's just going to be able to carry a few personal items, or do you need a larger bag because you're going on a weekend trip? Really, you've got to examine your needs, and I do think that every man should have a variety of bags in his arsenal. That being said, there was one bag in particular that I found I am using more than any other, so I am going to highlight that bag. But you know, this really comes down to the change in my schedule. I'm now waking up a little bit earlier. I'm taking my son to school, taking my daughter to school. It's something I'm going to Starbucks a couple times a week, trying to break up, coming here to the office. I've got quite a few people living in my house right now. So I find, yeah, it's a little bit easier to go to the gym in the morning and then to be able to be here at work. But I like to break up my day. And there is one bag in particular that's allowing me to carry basically all the items I need to, to and from when I'm moving in and out of the vehicle, going to a coffee shop and uh, just simply so I've got what I need when I need it. Now, assuming you've chosen the right style, the right size for your particular needs, there are three things I always look for to buy in a quality bag. Number one is making sure the construction, that it's well built, that it's sewn together properly, that this thing is not going to fall apart. Number two, I look at the material. I want the material that's going to have the functions that I need from the bag. And number three, I want it to look good. I do pay attention to style. First up, let's talk about construction. Very important to get this right. Otherwise, you're going to buy a bag that's going to fall apart way too early. Look at the stitching. Is it straight? And are there at least 10 stitches per inch? If you see 12, if you see 14, that's even better. They're going to use a thicker thread here and you want to make sure again that it's going in a straight line. I like to open up the back. Look on the inside. Are there any loose threads? Then look at the materials that they're using, the zipper, the hardware. These things are really important. Do they have rivets actually put in on pull points? So it should be something that you can yank on the luggage, especially those handles, and nothing should come apart. Now, with the hardware, you want to make sure those zippers move smoothly. And if it's claiming to be like water resistant, you want to make sure there's a seal around the zippers. Now, the most common synthetic material bags out there are made with polymer fibers. And these come in all different shapes with different properties, but basically they're made to mimic natural fibers and then enhance upon them. Now, I can feel the material right here is a fabric. And by that, I mean it's actually been fibers that have been stitched together. So it's got a tough, durable type of surface. This is going to be great for dealing with abrasion or anything that would, you know, cause a tear, it's not going to tear into this. And then right over here, for stylistic purposes, they've actually got a solid material. And that solid material is going to be like a faux leather. And what's nice about that, it gives it a really nice polished look. And that takes me to the third detail I look for in every bag I purchase. It should look good. It should have style. And this is something a lot of manufacturers, even if they use quality materials, some reason, drop the ball here. It ends up looking like a Frankenstein. You can get a mix mishmash of materials. It just doesn't always look good. So make sure that when you look at it, it just overall, it paints a picture like a designer actually went through, thought through how pieces should go together, how the function of the bag would still mesh with the overall design and look. Now, what about comfort? Well, for me, this actually goes into good design because a bag that's not comfortable, well, why would you even want to use it? Now, when it comes to backpacks, one of the things I look for is great padding on the shoulders. I also want some padding right here in the back of the bag. I also want breathability because this is going to be something that, yeah, if you're going on a 10 mile hike around the city, you're going to be in New York City for a day and you're going to be seeing the sights. You're going to be in London. You want something that is going to be able to breathe if you're sweating, if you're wearing this 
all day. Now, when it comes to laptop and messenger bags, bags I'm going to be using a strap that goes around the body, I find that actually making sure there's enough surface area, I don't necessarily need the padding, but what I need is more surface area around the strap. So, if it's got a thin strap, those are the kind of bags I stay away from or I even look to upgrade that strap because it makes a huge difference when you've got something that fits you properly in and around the shoulders. Now, at this point, you're probably saying, hey, you've been talking for a while, reveal the bag, your go-to bag, the one that you think every professional should have in 2022, I'm going to say it is the Esri Travel Backpack. Now, gents, I received this bag about five months ago, back in November of 2021, and I have to say that this has become my go-to bag. I love that it can carry everything I need to and from the vehicle, to and from the house. If I'm going to a coffee shop, I just simply want my laptop, I want a few books, my journal, something to write with, maybe a few incidentals here or there, maybe a snack, and all of it fits right in my backpack here. Now, I have to say, using this backpack daily, I've had no issues, no tears, it's incredibly comfortable, and I love all the hidden pockets. I've just got pockets all over the place. So, whatever you know, I want to put a credit card there. I've got some extra change. I've actually just found some headphones in here the other day that I had stashed and hidden away that uh, I was looking for. Now, gents, Esri is the sponsor of today's video and they reached out to me because they love the promotion we did back in November and they wanted to raise awareness of their Esri Elite. So, this is their professional backpack that can also double as a briefcase. And like all their backpacks, it's got tons of cool features. You've got a laptop compartment, tablet compartment, hidden strap pockets, hidden side pockets. You've got internal wiring so you can carry a battery and easily charge your phone, protected passport pockets, a luggage sleeve so it fits there right on your luggage, easily carry that through the airport, and the material that these bags are made from, durable, lightweight, and water resistant. And if the Esri Elite isn't your cup of tea, check out the Esri Executive. I love how this one opens up fully. You could actually put a full-on suit in this thing and it looks good. That black color just, yeah, I love the way the materials, the way that they've crafted this thing. The style on these bags is second to none. Gents, if you're looking for a backpack that's using quality materials, looks good and incredibly functional, check out Esri. And to make this a no-brainer for you, gents, down in the description of today's video, I've got the best deal you're going to find out there on the web. When you grab an Esri backpack, go check out Esri, use that link in the description of today's video and grab yourself a great looking backpack. Now, at this point, some of you guys may be saying, well, Antonio, you're talking about backpacks, but you've always said never wear a backpack with a suit. So, why would this be the go-to piece for most professionals? Well, I find a lot of guys, even me included, we're not wearing our suits as much, our sports jackets as much. I still have them and I could fold it up. And again, what I like about those backpacks is they have ample room for my sports jacket. But when it comes down to it, I just found because of my needs right now, I'm just gravitating towards backpacks. I want something, I dress a little bit more casual and yes, I probably need to incorporate and break out some more of those looks in my videos. But I do find, you know, I, I still don't think if you're wearing a suit, you should wear a backpack over that. No, take the jacket off, fold it, put it into the suit because you've got, you know, the shoulders right there on that jacket if it's a structured jacket, sports jacket, blazer, suit, you don't want to damage that. That being said, if it's for a short distance, I know some people have written me and said, you know what, Antonio, I have back issues. I've got shoulder issues, so I can't be just carrying a heavy briefcase. I've got to go to a backpack because i got to be able to move through the city, get on and off public transportation. I get it. In that case, then do what you need to do, but in general, be careful about if you've got a structured shoulder jacket wearing a backpack. And what about synthetic materials? Are they going to be more casual than, let's say, a dark black leather or dark brown leather? In general, the answer is yes, but it's about degrees. And there's all also, I know ethics involved. I have so many of you guys over the years have written me saying, Antonio, I don't want anything to do with animal products. So, I get that a lot of guys would gravitate towards something that's going to be using a synthetic material. That being said, you know, the backpacks I was just showing you and a lot of other options out there, if it's clean, if the design is on point, then I think a synthetic material is perfectly fine. No one's going to question this. What you want to be careful of is the synthetic backpacks out there that look like, you know, just simply, you know, a bug out bags or or they're way too, yeah, they're just way too rough looking or they use maybe a canvas material. That all of a sudden, especially in lighter colors, can make the backpack, can make the actual bag look a lot more casual. So, try to avoid anything that just has too many, you know, pockets on it, too many straps. You want to go for something clean in design, something that when you look at it, it's simple, it's clean, it looks good and then it really doesn't matter what material it's made from. 
And what about the future of messenger bags, satchels, briefcases? Do I think the times when a man had a solid square briefcase, and by briefcase, I mean a bag that actually has a structure on the outside of it made to actually protect the materials on the inside. Do I think those days are gone? Well, I think somewhat. I mean, the attache, the briefcase, I mean, they had their time and there is still a very suitable place for those bags, especially, like I said, when you want something that's structured, uh, there are metal briefcases out there that can provide protection. That being said, I think for the average guy, the backpack is really where it's going to be. We're going to see more luxury backpacks come out made from different materials. I do think leather has a lot of great properties, but everything I said, you know, about picking up stains, about the fact that you've got to take care of it, you've got to condition it, that over time it can start to crack, especially if you expose it to water damage. I've just found that I've been moving a lot more towards synthetic materials. I do occasionally use my leather bags though because I just love the look of them. I think it is a timeless look, but when it comes to practicality, I'm moving a lot more towards synthetics. All that being said, I would love to hear from you guys down in the description of today's video and I've got some cool Armourist coins I'm going to be sending out. I want to hear what has been your go-to bag this year. What's been the bag that you have been defaulting to? Maybe it's something new, maybe it's something old, maybe it's something classic. Again, let me know in the comments below which bag you're using. And what video to watch next? How about 10 unconventional rules that every man should know? Really, seriously, if you don't know these rules and these are unconventional, they're what's not really talked about and I think they're important for every guy to know. So, what are they? Find out, gents, by clicking right here and yes, you'll be magically taken to another video.